So, story time again. Um, I just remembered um, my daddy had a friend that we used, we, he invited, he, uh, he invited all of us to come fishing at his place, and his name was Mr. Martin. We called him Old Man Martin, because, you know, to us, being young, he was an old man. That's, you know how it is when you, when you get real young and everybody's old. Y'all know that. <clears throat> I remember the first time going up man's pond. It wasn't a very big pond, but for me, it was huge, okay? It's, it would be enough for somebody to get seriously unalived in, okay, if you wasn't careful. And uh, Mr. Martin kept saying, oh, there's bass and catfish and everything and this and that. All up in, you know, he was one of those types that liked to brag. Sweetest man ever. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway. So we go out there. He done taught my dad into taking us all out there to go fishing. Now, I love fishing. I still love fishing. I ain't got no issue with fishing. I can skin a fish, gut a fish, whatever you need me to do, I can do it. Okay? So we go out there and get go to fishing. Nobody catching anything. My dad and brothers and all of them, they walk off to the other side. And I said, well, I'm just going to stay here because, you know, my granny always told me if you go fishing, make sure you're fishing by yourself because if you got too many lines on the water, you won't never catch nothing because everybody else we don't catch something because your your line in the water and so is theirs so they went on around the pond which is fine i could see them it wasn't like they were very far but they went on i don't know i don't know what ways okay i could still see them in the distance it wasn't like it was right there and i knew how to swim anyway so i finally we back in those days y'all we didn't have all these fancy lures and all these fancy gadgets and all this stuff you had a cane pole a line and a hook and a worm or chicken livers or chicken gizzards that's what you went fishing with you didn't have and, and if you caught a fish you didn't have these fancy gadgets to put you didn't have you didn't take no plies or nothing you did all that with your fingers okay we, it was old-fashioned. That was back in the day. That was before a lot of people were born. And I know some of my older ladies, such as myself, if you're above 40, y'all remember this. So I'm out there with my little cane pole and my little, um, and we did have those little old-timey, y'all know what I'm talking about, them round corks that was red on top, but it was like white and brown on the bottom because, you know, it had been in the water so long that the white came out, started coming off, so you just got the brown. And they were made from actual wine corks. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm out there fishing. Now, I ain't never in my life, I had never knew, I only, I still really don't know what a bass look like except for what I'll see on TV. I know that uh, I fish, when I fish, I like brim. And I like a few little catfish. I don't like to fool with a catfish because that's just a little too much work. But my thing is brim. Okay, that's my thing. So I'm out there fishing. And I caught one. I caught a bass. Okay. Now, it, this wasn't no big fish. This was probably six, seven, eight inches, maybe, give or take. Not even a pound. But you know what? Back in those days, we were, we was collecting. We was collectors. You know, the only way we survived was going out and hunting, fishing, growing our, all our own food because we couldn't afford to buy everything. We couldn't. We, you couldn't afford back in those days to just go to the grocery store unless you was rich. We had to do most of it ourselves. So we didn't throw anything away. The only thing we would throw, if it was like two or three inches away, we would throw it back in the water. The rest of it we caught because that's neat for the freezer. Okay? You survived. You had to survive. And we put that thing on one of those, y'all know what I'm talking about, those nylon lawn stringer things. Y'all know they got the fence one now that has all the hooks and y'all know what I'm talking about. It's a stringer that you just stick in the ground. It's got a sharp nail looking thing on one end and it's got the ring on the other. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And it's a nylon string. So I put it I put that fish on that and I went around and I said, Daddy, I caught a fish. I need you to come see it. He came over there. He said, oh, yeah, that's a bass. But we pulled. The way it's positioned, you couldn't see anything but just like the top of the head. He's like, that's a bass. And he pulled it up and half the fish was gone. Yeah. I hadn't even left it in there. Not even. I wasn't even away from that spot. Not even two minutes before I was coming back. I was going to get the bucket to put the fish in. So, Mr. Martin which we call, like I said, Old Man Martin. 
He said, oh, we got plenty of turtles out there, and that's from a snapping turtle, and there is a bug on my phone. I was like, I've been fishing a million times. I ain't never seen no snapping turtle, no snapper come up in here and take a whole, I mean, he took the whole, that whatever it was, took the whole fish in half. Like, it was just a head and a fin, and the rest was gone. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I ain't never seen that. And still, to this day, don't know what it was. Don't know what it was that took, cut that, chopped that fish right on up in half and just left the head and the first fin, the rest of it was gone. And um, there was another one, and uh, Brother Bud was his name. He was somebody we used to go to church with, and uh, sweetest man you there. Him and his wife were such sweet people, and I miss them. They're both gone. I think they're both gone. I know he's gone. Yeah, his wife is gone because I went. I go by their grave to go by my to see my dad's grave. And he had this beautiful field of nothing but cows. And on this front field, he had like two or three ponds. So he always let like church members come and fish in his pond. So and he had like this one, one point pond, wasn't a big pond, but it was swarming with catfish. Okay, well, brother, buddy. Good old country man. When I say country, I'm talking about like 1920s country. Good old country boy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Country man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Raised poor, got his money as he worked for it. That's how he did it. So we always went there to go fishing too. Uh, and then um, he come out there one day and he was like, I got a new gun. I want you to shoot. I'm like, I don't really want to shoot your gun because I know I'm good with my, I, at that time I had a 22. Y'all know a 22 rifle. I know I'm good with my gun, but now I'm just really like a year or two into learning to shoot because I was just getting of that age. And um, so shooting up a hill or down the hill wasn't in my teaching at that time, if you get what I'm saying. Well, anyway, he was like, just shoot it. He said, there's a snake right out there on that log. I want you to get rid of because I'm, you know, because that the pond was a little snake. It was nothing to see five or six snakes every time you went out there. Okay, I said I'll try, but I'm not. I, I'm not good at shooting down the hill, in which it was at an angle. It was down the hill, and the lake was at the bottom of the hill. Honey, I shot like five times, adjusting everything. You know, saw where it shot, came up a little bit, shoot there, and it all a little lower, go up. Y'all know adjusting where you're shooting at. Okay, snake would not move. Now, me, if I would have been that snake the first time that shot ran, I would have went up under water. They would have never found me again. I promise you. But that snake just stayed there because he was, he, he, I guess he was bold. Brother, and Brother Buddy said, let me see that. Let me show you how it's done. Now, let me tell you a little secret. Brother Buddy wasn't nothing to play with you. Nothing. Sweetest and funniest man ever. But when it came to a rifle or fishing or hunting, that man was, you couldn't top him. You couldn't. He wouldn't no hunter around here go up against that man. You understand? That man grabbed that gun, propped it up against the tree, and he hit that snake one shot. Pow! That was it. Snake went underwater. You didn't ever see it again. Me, I done shot six, seven, twenty-seven, twenty-eight times. I don't know, but it was probably five or six, and missed it every time. Brother buddy, that man. I knew he was gonna hit it. I done heard stories by him. I knew he was going to hit it because he had a reputation to uphold. I knew he was going to hit it. Me trying to hit it. No, that was a whole different story. I look like boo-boo-boo, but I didn't care. I just thought it was cool that he he was probably 75, 76 back in those days. Brother Buddy's been gone a long time. And I love Brother Buddy. He was so sweet and so funny. And um, uh, he had a reputation uphold, and he, he, he upheld it that day. One shot, it was over. I was a life back in those days. I'll tell you, where you cooked your own, where you, you hunted your own food, you grew your own food, and you fished for your own food. What none of this laziness. And let me tell you a secret. When I was 14, I had to get a job and still attend school. Wasn't none of this half sitting around the house not doing nothing. We had grass to cook, jobs to work. We had gardening to do we had fishing to do my brothers were hunted i didn't i never was a i never was a hunter i know how to hunt i just don't and let me tell you that was back in the day everything was so simple you didn't have all this mess in this world love you